New news reports indicate that Ginny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, is maybe no longer willing to cooperate with the House Select panel investigating the January 6th riots and Donald Trump's attempts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Now, previously she said, I can't wait to testify. I can't wait to talk to them. You know, clear my good name. After there were reports that she had sent text messages to Mark Meadows, Trump's former chief of staff. She had also exchanged emails with John Eastman, the unhinged Trump lawyer who had pushed to implement this insane theory of using sham electors to replace the actual legitimate electors. That was his whole plan to overturn the election. Well, Ginny Thomas again said, I'm down to testify, I'm down to cooperate with all of this. But following some damning testimony that recently took place, featuring Cassidy Hutchinson, who happens to be the former chief of staff's aide or was the former chief of staff's aide under Donald Trump. Now all of a sudden her lawyer speaking out and saying, mm, no, no, maybe, maybe Ginny isn't gonna testify or cooperate. So let's get into the details, okay? so. The committee, meaning the House Select Committee, has sought Jimmy, Ginny, Ginny Thomas's testimony twice after learning that she was exchanging texts with former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and emails with former President Donald Trump's lawyer, John Eastman. Now, her lawyer has responded to the committee's formal request with an eight page letter questioning why her testimony was needed at all. He said the emails with Eastman, texts with Meadows, and a letter she sent to state lawmakers in Arizona, by the way, about alleged election fraud provided no basis for an interview. Now, just to juxtapose what her lawyer is saying and what Ginny Thomas had previously said, in an earlier report, after talking to the Daily Caller, Ginny Thomas said, quote, I can't wait, I can't wait to clear up misconceptions. I look forward to talking to them meaning the House Select Committee. Well, uh, who knows where she's at? What's clear to me at this point is that her lawyer is trying to prevent her from cooperating further. And I don't think her lawyer would be doing that unless he thinks that her cooperation would actually incriminate her further uh, rather than clear up her name or clear up her reputation. Now, her lawyer seemed to address the fact that she wanted to testify, so he didn't forget that. But he had a weird excuse for, for blocking it from happening, okay? So he says, quote, as she has already indicated, Mrs. Thomas is eager to clear her name and is willing to appear before the committee to do so. However, based on my understanding of the communications that spurred the committee's request, I do not understand the need to speak with Mrs. Thomas. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, he's a lawyer. I'm guessing he probably gets paid a lot more than I do. Um, so it's weird that he doesn't understand why the House Select Committee would be interested in interviewing her, considering the uh, damning evidence that we've already seen in the form of text messages and email exchanges that Ginny Thomas had with all sorts of unsavory individuals who are assisting Donald Trump in stealing the election from Biden overturning the results of our democratic process, canceling out the votes of literally tens of millions of Americans. But since he doesn't seem to understand, he doesn't understand. Let me explain it to him. First off, there were dozens, 29 text messages exchanged between Ginny Thomas and Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in the days both before and after the 2020 election. Now. What did we learn from those text message exchanges? Why don't we watch? The committee getting its hands on at least two dozen texts sent between Jenny Thomas and President Trump's then chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in the days after the election. In one, Thomas writing, quote, help this great president stand firm, Mark. Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. And in another, just days after the 2020 election, Thomas writing, do not concede. Other messages show Thomas pushing false conspiracy theories, urging Meadows to tell officials in the West Wing to buck up. We're gonna walk down to the Capitol. Thomas attended that rally at the White House before rioters stormed the Capitol on January 6th. 
but telling the Washington Free Beacon in a recent interview that she got cold and left early. Yeah, and that's the other thing. She was at the rally. And then she left right before the riots took place. Did she really leave because she was cold or did she know that something was about to go down? And what we've learned from the recent hearings was the fact that you have Giuliani and Mark Meadows communicating with Cassidy Hutchinson. Again, that was the aide for Mark Meadows, that something, something was gonna go down on January 6th. If Ginny Thomas is communicating closely with White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, is she also someone who happened to be aware of what was gonna take place on January 6th? Did she really just leave because she was cold? I mean, these are legitimate questions that I'm sure the House Select Committee would like to ask as part of their investigation. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg with Ginny Thomas, okay? That is information that we learned about her three months ago, three months ago. More recently, we learned other damning information, which I'll get to in a moment, but keep this in mind. After January 6th, Ginny Thomas told Meadows in a text that she was, quote, disgusted. Let me repeat that again, disgusted with Pence, who had refused to help block the certification of Biden's electoral college victory. She wrote, quote, we are living through what feels like the end of America. This woman is a lunatic. It feels like the end of America because we haven't succeeded in convincing the vice president to do something that he has no power to do. It's the end of America because we can't overturn the results of an election that we have failed, absolutely failed to provide a single shred of evidence had any widespread voter fraud involved. Now this woman, and the fact that her husband, by the way, is Justice Clarence Thomas, someone who could be handing down decisions in regard to you know, this, this case, what Donald Trump and his cronies tried to do with stealing this election, overturning the results of this election. It's a massive conflict of interest. And to question why investigators would want to talk to her is one of the dumbest arguments, like dumbest questions I could ever imagine. Now, it gets worse. She was also communicating closely with John Eastman, as I mentioned earlier. And John Eastman is the unhinged Trump lawyer who came up with the sham elector idea in the first place. And here's what we know. Thomas also pressed Republican lawmakers in Arizona to help keep Trump in office by setting aside Biden's popular vote win and to choose their own electors. Homegirl's hitting them up in Arizona. She's like, yo, listen. Let's get rid of these electors, these like legit electors, and let's just install our own cronies and steal this election from the rightful winner. And look, let me be clear, I am very critical of Joe Biden. He was not my preferred candidate in the Democratic primaries. There's a lot, I mean, he's a target rich environment in regard to his failures. But what's right is right, and he won the election. And yes, I'm happy that he won against Trump, he certainly, Somewhat better than Trump, especially Biden's, you know, National Labor Relations Board. But there's more to this. So, the email claimed that the responsibility to choose electors belongs to voters under yours and yours alone, and claimed that the legislature had the power to fight back against fraud and ensure that a clean slate of electors is chosen. So that's an email that she sent on November 9th to 27 lawmakers in the Arizona House and Senate. So she not only was communicating with all these people who were very close to Trump, who very much wanted to overturn the results of the election, she was scheming with them. She put into action what John Eastman was suggesting should be done to overturn the election. So for her lawyer, who seems to be confused, I think that there are legitimate reasons for these members of the House Select Committee to sit down with her, ask her questions, whether it's in a deposition or maybe even during testimony in one of these hearings, it is important. And I hope they subpoena her, and if she refuses to do it, she should be held in contempt.
Merrick Garland should uh, file charges against her as well as he did with Steve Bannon, for instance. Now we'll see if that happens. But the other part of this is it is a problem that one of the Supreme Court justices is married to this woman who tried to help Trump overturn the results of the election. Will he recuse himself? Probably not. Will he be adequately pressured to recuse himself? Probably not. And so when we think about why it is that so many Americans, both on the left and the right, have lost trust in our institutions, this is why. This is part of the reason why. And this isn't one incident in a vacuum. It's a system that's told the American people, if you're not part of the elites, if you're not a powerful person, you don't really matter. But if you are, if you are a part of the elite, if you are a powerful person, you can literally play a role in trying to overturn legitimate results of an election. So your preferred candidate wins and there'll be no consequences for it. That sends a damning message to the American people. And this is not a time when Democrats need to continue engaging in the same old mealy mouthed weak politics. Merrick Garland hasn't even said a damn thing about charging Donald Trump even given the damning evidence and testimony that was provided in recent House Select Committee hearings. So we'll see what happens, but make no mistake about it. Ginny Thomas absolutely should be subpoenaed. She should be forced to give a deposition in the very least.